Welcome to Numerical Methods. So we are in a section on the Monte Carlo method. Well, my introduction was a bit sloppy in two aspects. The first one is I was a bit sloppy about how these drawings yeah, actually are modeled. Yeah? So I, I quickly went to the computer and generated this sequence. But what actually does it mean to have a sequence of drawings of a random variable or according to a certain probability? Yeah? So what is a drawing? And there you have to remember how a drawing is modeled and how you make um, statements about drawings. And when you recall how this is done, there is already lying the reason why the Monte Carlo method can break the curse of dimension. And another aspect where I was a bit sloppy was actually the convergence. So in which sense yeah, do we have here this this convergence. Unfortunately, this convergence will be in probability. So if you go back to our picture or the long the long running sequence, yeah, in the limit we converge with probability one. So there's a null set, yeah, where we have a sequence that does not converge. Yeah? But um, since we actually, in the computer, we stop at a certain point, it's completely unclear yeah, in how good, how good we are. OK, I will often comment here on this uh, defect. Yeah, I will mention it from time to time. Uh, but uh, rest assured that the funny thing is that sometime later, when we talk about low discrepancy sequences, we can actually even fix this and get a point-wise result. Yeah? So it's not such a bad idea to just move on. And the Monte Carlo method also works very well yeah, if you just use it with a pseudo-random number sequence. Yeah? So that the result only holds in problem. Let's go to the first point and consider drawings of random variables vectors of ID, random variables, and curse of dimensionality. So recall how is a drawing modeled. In the following, I consider a random variable x. And now what I would like to model is independent, identically distributed, yeah, so iid, random variables, xi tilde. So the xi tilde should have the same distribution as x. Yeah, of course, I cannot model this just using maybe the same space that was used to model x. Yeah? Consider our small space, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah? There are only six events. But if I make two drawings, I already have 36 events. Yeah? Six for the first outcome, six for the second outcome. Yeah? So I need somehow a larger space. And the sequence of IID random variable can then inter interpret it as modeling the drawing in the sense that the drawing is a single event on that sequence. So the drawing to five is a single event in my space of 36 events, two for the first six, five for the second six possibilities. Yeah? So two, five is a single event. Yeah? So this setup can be interpreted 
as modeling independent drawings in the following sense that the drawing omega tilde is now a single event, omega tilde. And if I evaluate the IID sequence on this single event, this sequence is my drawing of X. Yeah? So the thing is that I do X of omega I is the X tilde I of omega tilde. And again, the remark that omega I and omega tilde, they are from different spaces. Yeah? The omega I is from the small space where X was defined and the omega tilde from this enlarged space. So to make this precise, maybe you still know this from a long time ago, what we do is we introduce the product space. We introduce the product space. So we have the product set omega times omega times omega. So my single event on the product space is a sequence or a vector of different events in the space omega. Yeah, th then you have the um, sigma field, the corresponding sigma field for the product space. Here my F tilde, yeah, the sigma field generated by the product of the sigma fields. Okay, and I have the probability on the product space which is just the product of the probabilities of the sets yeah, coming then from the product sigma field. So actually this is then modeling independence yeah, that we have just the product here. And um, now I can define this random variable X tilde, so the random variable X tilde that lives on my product space. And my X tilde is now defined such that X tilde I, yeah, this is now my sequence of IID random variables, my X tilde I of an omega tilde is just evaluate X of omega i. So you take a single event from your product space. The single event contains different events of the individual omegas. Yeah? And you evaluate x again and again on this. So you have a single event. And this is then my xi of omega tilde. This is here actually the crucial point. X tilde is a sequence of IID random variables. X tilde of omega tilde is now a sequence of drawings. So the X of omega i. So this is then the sequence of drawings. And the crucial thing is that my drawing is actually in the product space, a single event. A different omega tilde would be a different sequence. Like in our plot, what you see here is omega tilde one, omega tilde two, two different drawings. So tilde for the product space, the omega without the tilde for the uh, original random variable. So the modeling of the drawings is done by considering a single event omega tilde in 
the product space and the product space is this guy that models here the sequence of iid random variables so why is this an issue so the reason is that the convergence results that we now discuss they all consider let xi be a sequence of iid random variables having the same distribution then x then the average of this sequence converges to something yeah. so it is the average of the sequence of these random variables and what we do if we do this sampling in the computer is we just look at a single event of this um, sequence of iid random variables yeah. So if we have a result that holds in probability, it does not tell us anything for a single event. So next part is vectors of IID random variables with IID components. So the thing I would like to look at is I have a vector Z. say set, set one, set two, two, set D, where set I is a real valued random variable and all the set I's have the same distribution and are independent. So these set one, two, set D, yeah, they are IID. And Z is now a vector. So now I have a random variable in D dimension. So assume we have a sequence of real valued IID random variables, say 1D, one dimensional IID random variables. Then we may construct a vector sequence by just taking the first D components and putting it into the vector. So we may construct a vector x1 to xd yeah, using now the first random variable x1 in the first component, the second random variable x2 in the second component, and so on, until the vector is filled. Yeah. And then we have constructed a d-dimensional vector yk. So the d-dimensional vector yk is now constructed by taking its elements. The elements are yk1 to ykd, such that the ykj is x at k minus 1 times d plus j. So if k is equal to 1, k minus 1 times d is 0. So you just count the j. Yeah. The J is counted now in the dimension 1, 2, 3, 4, D. So you take the first D axis and populate the vector Y. And then the K is incremented. Yeah. So you get the Y2. Yeah. So you increment the K. You get the Y2. And the J starts again from one, two, three, and so on, and repopulates the uh, vector. Okay, little figure. Yeah? So this would be the case if you have a one-dimensional sequence for X, and you would like to generate a two-dimensional sequence with IID components, where the components have the same distribution than X. So you take the sequence, of IID random variables X, and the first element is populating the first component of the first element, the second element, the second component of the first element, and then the third element, the first component of the second element, and the fourth element, the second component of the second element. Yeah, this is a method which you would also naively use in the computer. Maybe we can have a small look here. Uh, there is, 
for example, here the random vector LCG. So this is a small class, which we will discuss also later again. Uh, so we will discuss here the linear concurrential generator. So this class takes as an input the length of the sequence and the dimension. And you see I'm allocating here an array that has the corresponding length and dimension. And then I loop over all elements of the sequence, but the element of the sequence is a vector of dimension d, yeah, of dimension. So I'm populating here the vector exactly in this order, which I mentioned, by the next random number. Huh? So the random number sequence, so this here is the random number sequence is populating this vector. So if you like, there's also a function that plots this and you can also maybe check the debugger here and create the plot. So my debugger will stop here and yeah, maybe it's nicer to have a look at the variables here below. So if we now initialize this um, random vector, we can have a look at this random vector sequence. You see it's initialized to zero and he will populate these entries. Yeah, First random number goes there, second random number goes there. So this is the first element of the vector value sequence. First random number goes there, second goes there. Yeah? So this is number three and four. So this is the second element of the vector sequence and so on. So he is now populating all these entries component by component. And if you let this uh, run, he will actually generate now this nice picture yeah, of a two-dimensional random vector where each component is uniform on zero one. So this would be how you would generate a vector valued random variable out of yeah, a one-dimensional random variable sequence, yeah, sequence of IID random variables. So my X is a sequence of an IID random variable, or of IID random variables, and my YK is a sequence of IID random vectors having IID components. So what you see here is that this method actually scales linear in the dimension. Yeah. So the thing is that to generate a sequence in D dimension, it's just that you need D times as many random variables in your one dimensional sequence. And now let's go back to how a sequence of IID random variables is modeled. A sequence of IID random variable is modeled as a product space. So actually for our modeling, we just model a bunch of IID random variables on the spot product space. And this product space has size n times d. Yeah. So our modeling does not care about do we have 100 IID random variables in a 10 dimensional space, or do we have 1000 IID random variables in a one dimensional space? It's just a bunch of IID random variables. So the modeling is actually independent of the dimension in that sense, yeah, that we just need n times d IID random variables to construct this. So this is where you can generate this plot, which I had. And yeah, now comes the remark that the Monte Carlo method breaks the curse of dimensionality. So the overhead to generate sample points and sample points means we have a sequence of RID random variables on which we evaluate one 
say, event, this overhead scales linear in the dimension d. Yeah? So to generate this, we need d one-dimensional sam sample points to generate one d-dimensional sample point. Yeah, it's just n times d, yeah, and not n to the power of d, like you would have in, yeah, many uh, classical um, integration rules. Yeah, so many numerical methods have an overhead that scales exponentially in the dimension. Yeah, for classical Riemann sum as an integration rule in higher dimension, you need n to the power of d sample points to achieve the accuracy. Yeah, that is O of one divided by n. Yeah? So recall that our drawing is modeled via the product space. So for my, for the Monte Carlo method, one drawing of a d-dimensional random variable with IID components is just like d drawings of a one-dimensional random variable. Yeah? It's the same modeling space that lies underneath these two things. Yeah? And that's why our probabilistic setup, our Monte Carlo method, actually breaks the curse of dimension because for him, one drawing of a d-dimensional is like d drawings of a one-dimensional. So this will become important. Yeah, later we have examples where we compare a classical integration method with the Monte Carlo method, and you see, for example, Monte Carlo has an advantage over Simpson's rule um, when the dimension becomes higher than eight, yeah, or something like this. Yeah? You need a high dimensional space, but many problems also in mathematical finance are quite high dimensional.